Hey guys. Hello. So we're back in the shop. Cleaning that thing. So what are we going to clean it with? Well, we're going to restore it to uh, its former glory to the best of our capability. Uh-huh. And that means a few things. One, it's dusty. Yep. So we're going to have to dust it off. Yep. Two, it's dirty. Yep. So we're going to have to wash it off. Yep. We'll just use water for that. Okay. And then uh, after we get it dried up after its bath, we're going to use this stuff. Restore finish? Yeah. Okay. And we're going with the mahogany this time because it's a darker finish. Yep. And basically this stuff, um, my guess is that it essentially reliquidizes the just a very, very out outermost layer of the finish mm -hmm. and lets it flow a little bit because mm -hmm. it really takes out all of the little tiny micro scratches and all that mm -hmm. and makes it uh, look like it was more recently finished again. So we're going to go with that restore finish on there and that'll help uh, take out all the little scratches and heat rings and all that kind of stuff. And then we're going to jump in with the feed and wax, which you guys have seen us use many times. Mm -hmm. That's orange oil and beeswax. Yep. The orange oil um, basically soaks in and uh, makes wood happy. In this case, it's already finished, so not so much. And then the waxing coat seals it all in and makes it have a nice um, natural shine without having to use polyurethane or anything nasty like that. Yep or uh, shellac, which is made from bug excretions, and they also <laughs> use it in hairspray. So, you know, every time you spray that stuff in your hair, remember, that's bug excretions that you're putting in your hair. See you later, 80s. Yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna get rid of the 80s, and uh, we're gonna bring back the 1930s, back when real men used pomade. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, let's get busy here. Okay. I'm gonna get some water on my homemade shop cloths. There's an old sheet cut into squares. Recycle. Nothing fancy. Is it dirty? Not too bad. I wonder if we've cleaned it already. No. I intentionally didn't clean it because I wanted to uh, leave it for making of the video. Uh -huh. So we're starting from literally how these things showed up here. All right, so this is basically just taking off the dust and any grit and grime that's on the outside of the case here. And we're, of course, not going to leave the water on it for very long. If anything's going to soak in, it's going to be the orange oil. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with the cloth? The grill cloth? We'll take it out, probably, um, while we do all of our detailed cleaning here. It's got an interesting mounting method. There's little screws behind each one of these things that are attached from the back. Oh. This glass can also come out. I'm not sure if I want to, but... Well, the paint on those can be really delicate. Yeah. So it depends Very, on what you want to do. It's already peeled off a little tiny bit yeah. in a couple of places. But it's okay if this looks old. It's, it is old. It's 1936 was the model on this radio, I believe. So, you know, it's okay if it's beat up. It's, it's lived a lot longer than I have, and honestly, I don't feel all that good some mornings, <laughs> so I'm not judging the radio. Okay, so let's see if we need to take this apart to clean these, it doesn't look like it but once we get the restore finish I want to have this cloth off of here so mm -hmm. we'll uh we'll try to take this off let's see what we can see you can sort of see these um, things here 
Mm -hmm. Somebody's already taken the nuts off. You know, you'd normally just have uh, nuts that go on there and it looks like hold a staple it in place. Down. Somebody may have done a half-assed restoration attempt at some point. That staple feels like it's attached, but it'll come off easily enough. If you're not comfortable working with stuff like this, or you've never done it before, it's good to have a good idea what you're doing beforehand, because this sort of stuff is more valuable than you think it is. So this one doesn't want to loosen up for me. Speaker baffle. So like we got a little bit more cardboard still to come loose around this screw here. Mm -hmm. There's two layers of it. On this side. Carefully, carefully. Alright, so there's the back of it, and there's the front, and you can see what the original color was. It's a little bit darker than it would have been originally, but this is, you know, what it used to be, and this is after the sun has faded it for, mm -hmm. you know, 80 years mm -hmm. plus. How are we going to clean this? I don't think we're going to. Oh, okay. What I've done previously is replaced the grill cloth, but in this case I might just keep it. Okay. Because I do bad. like it. Yeah. I do like it. All right. Now we can spin this around and get in here without worrying about the cloth. I'm sure there's probably ways that you could clean that fabric. I could do some research and see, but I do kind of like that it looks as old as it is. Mm -hmm. um, that's honest, you know. It's. I think it's good that it. Uh, it's in extremely good condition for the age that it's that it is. You know, I've seen many of these radios, and they're usually torn to shreds mm -hmm. at this age. So. You know, there was a period of time after TVs got popular that radios just sort of became like what we would think of as an 8-track player today. You know, nobody holds any value for them, so... But now, the, the classic lines are, are in vogue again, so... Mm -hmm. You can uh, expect people to treat them a little bit better now. Alright, oh, one more wipe down, just a get up any of the little detail spots that I may have missed. And we can switch over to restore a finish. Okay. Alrighty. Getting this opened up here. Get me an extra cap inside. plug here. It's kind of interesting. This uh, bottle is probably the only bottle I've ever seen in recent history that does not have a barcode on it. <laughs> it's the real stuff. Yep. Okay, so basically I want to put this in an intermediary container mm -hmm. so that I'm not um, getting steel wool or lint or anything into the, the bottle. Mm -hmm. So you can use cloth. Ooh, that is dark. You can use cloth, you can use steel wool, and whisker, I believe, it's is... It's got a solvent in it, so you want to make sure you don't expose it to air more than you have to. Mm -hmm. All right, how are we going to start? I guess we'll start on this side so you guys can see really easily. Okay. So, um, the steel wool is for the more scratched areas, mm -hmm. and the cloth is good for most of it. You're not supposed to apply this stuff directly to the finish. You're supposed to apply it to a cloth and then run the cloth on the finish. And scratch just disappear. It just vanishes. Yeah? Mm hmm It's like freaking magic. Look at that. <laughs> I 
and I'm pretty sure it's like melting the, the outer layer of the finish too. So don't drink it, kids. No, no, don't even smell it. It doesn't smell too bad. No, it's it's got that solvent smell. I guess that means I smelled it, but... So there's some water stains along the finish right there. I'm not sure there's much we can do about that. You could steel wool it. Steel wool is more for scratches that this doesn't work on. Mm -hmm. The cloth is not functional on. So I don't want to go with the steel wool until I find a situation that I'm just totally not satisfied with. And mm -hmm. Being under the finish like that, the water, I don't know that this would help at all. We may have to use steel wool on these though, because there's some deep gouges. I'm really happy with how this is working. It's gonna be beautiful. Mm -hmm. So do you have to dry it off afterwards? Or you just let it air dry? Don't skip ahead. Oh. You two at home, don't skip it head. <laughs> if you're currently rubbing finish on a 1930s radio at home, following along, don't skip ahead. Watch the whole video, get all the steps before you start. It's looking really good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, I think we finally got one that might be deep enough. Let's see here. We'll steal a wall. Just dip in the steel wool and the liquid there. We'll rub it out on this guy right here. We don't want to create extra micro scratches beyond. And there it is. So now I can take some more of this and before that sets up, get all nice and soft again and that scratch is totally gone. Nice. All right, do you see any more uh, glaring scratches left on the side? Nope. All right. I think we can... Uh... <laughs> it's like a mirror. I can see like other stuff. Yeah. That's very nice. Cool. All right. We'll uh, do the top and we'll be back when we do the other side because Addie's not tall enough to show you guys the top. I can show. I can try. See, look. Ta-da. <laughs> Alright, so we got the top and we got the shoulders as False well. False short alarm. Oh wow, look at that. All these sun-baked cracks in the finish here. Mm -hmm. Watch what happens when I run over those. Nice. Just gone. Just totally gone. We got some more serious damage up on front. We'll have to try the steel wool with that. But I'm gonna finish going over the easy stuff here first. Now this is more of a water ring mark right here. Mm -hmm. And they say to use steel wool on the water ring stuff. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if it goes through. I don't want to rub the finish completely off though, you know, it's 
ruining it is not an option. Let's see where we're at. Looking a little bit better, but it's still got some of that extra texture that I'm trying to get rid of. Mm -hmm. some more. Smooth it out. Getting closer. Can you guys guess what that is? Yep. Woo! Looks almost as good as the real thing, huh? So some of the texture problem that's left is that the finish is actually not um, down into the, the spots in between the grain. Mm -hmm. There's actually some pockets in there. And those will fill up with wax when we wax it later. Oh, okay. So I'm getting to the point where I'm just about, there's just a couple of rough spots left. So I think one more with the steel wool in this area and it should be just fine. Okay. I'm just gonna avoid the letters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like night and day. Mm -hmm. I really love these Art Deco lines. Yeah, this one's actually a pretty nice one. From There's the a few models seen. I like even more than this. But, yeah, the this is a pretty good one. 
for the tombstone styles of the 30s. This is a great example. The ones I like a little bit more have the shoulders that go in and mm -hmm. then it goes up and goes in again. Because oh. that's a little bit more of the gothic art deco, mm -hmm. which I really, really like. But this one is great for a guitar amp. Reminds me of the movie Metropolis. Yep. Metropolis was absolutely an art deco piece. Do you want to be really gentle on the shoulders and stuff? Because I don't want to take finish off of those corners on the molded pieces. Mm -hmm. But I do want to get in there and smooth out some of the rough patches. Because that really makes all the difference on whether or not a finish looks good. It doesn't have any rough patches. Obviously this thing's never going to look perfect again without some serious cheating. But we can do a pretty good job. So I got probably our worst scratch is there. Yeah. Let's see how this does against it. Okay. Most of it gone with that. Impressive. By the way, if you're using this stuff, you should probably wear gloves. Gloves, maybe some breathing protection. It's fumes, so, you know, well-ventilated area. Yep. Because there's solvents in it, it will irritate your skin eventually. Is your skin irritated? No, because I haven't been doing it for very long. Mm. But if you were to say, put some of this stuff on this towel and then stick the towel in your back pocket, Oh yeah. You'd think it was fine for like 15 minutes and then you get the tinkling sensation in your butt <laughs> and then you'd have a red spot on your ass cheek for a week and a half. <laughs> I don't Hasn't know. Hasn't that happened before? Yeah. What, we, what was it that we... Well I, I did that once when I was a, when I was a kid cleaning off big metal sheets. Oh. I was using uh, mineral spirits or you know something yeah. like that. It was, it was hilarious. Well, I think was it I was using some sort of chemical cleaner, <laughs> and then you my do it fingers too? my fingers went white. Oh, yeah. Which one was that one? It's probably more peroxide based. Yes, that's what it was. I can't remember what I was using the peroxide for, but my fingers totally went white and gross, and I was like, "What is this?" Yeah, I gotta be. It's careful. like a chemical burn. Gotta be careful with chemicals. I've used this stuff before, so I know that uh, glove thing was, was for something this small, it would be fine. How the stretches go? We got a little bit of uh, we saw a little surface bit. stuff here to mess with. Yeah. We're not going to be able to take it completely out because it's actually like into the wood. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we'll do what we can. Just a little bit too rough right there. Obviously this part of the radio would have been where it took a lot of damage. This is where the hands were always going in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we dry? Now we wipe it down. Okay. Are you gonna call it call it the tombstone? 
Project Tombstone. Project Omar gets its own amplifier. Yep. We're definitely going to have to fix the feet on it. <laughs> so it stops wobbling. Yep. We might put new big tall rubber feet on it or something even. Where did you first hear about uh, the Restore finish? Well, I just found it on a shelf one day and Used thought it. I would give it a shot on an old, uh, I think it was a Hammond organ. Oh, one of ours upstairs? Yeah, one of my M3s. Mm. We're pretty lucky we were able to find the feed and wax too. Yeah, same company. Yep. So I'm glad I found that company because this stuff is amazing. Awesome. Love it. It's made in the U.S., which is also nice too. Especially for a project like this, which is all about Americana. Mm -hmm. This says bringing was, back the good things. That's cool. They even tell you which date it was made on. Made on seven ten thirteen. So, what four months ago? Five months ago. All right, get your glory shot there, and uh, we gotta let this set up for fifteen minutes or so, and then we're gonna go in and give it a nice wax. Okay. All right, so Whiskers wiping it down, getting rid of any excess uh, restore finish. Mm -hmm. We're just using an old t-shirt to, to mm -hmm. do it. Looks real nice though. The next step, I believe, is waxing. I'm gonna buff it up a little bit before I bother. So we want to get a nice smooth surface. Mm -hmm. And then we'll use the wax to fill in the gaps and all that. Okay. You're gonna buff it without the wax first? Briefly. Oh. How'd that go? Very well.
Okay, bead and wax. Bead and wax. Stuff is not really that complicated. You put it on whichever cloth you're going to be using to do the application. Yep. And you rub it on liberally and you let it sit for 20, 30 minutes, whatever. So it can soak in and fill in all the little cracks. And then you come back through and you polish it up with a clean cloth, wiping off all the excess. Mm -hmm. It's real easy to use. And then you buff it. it. Works really well. And I go a little bit overboard with this stuff because I use it as also a sort of furniture polish, a furniture wax. So I'm using it to fill up all the little inconsistencies on the finish. So I'm rubbing that wax down into those cracks. Mm -hmm. And I won't stop with just one coat. I'll be doing multiple coats of the stuff, filling it all in as I go, and letting that wax harden up and going over it and polishing it up and adding another layer as you go through each layer you get a little bit smoother and a little bit smoother and more area filled mm -hmm. it's easy it's a little time consuming but it's a sort of job that pays to take your time and do right I really enjoy being able to have a nice furniture finish on something without having to use polyurethane or anything like that. Or bug guts. Yeah. Or bug spit or whatever it is. Shellac. Shellac. Bug excretion. From the lac bug. Really? Yep. Hmm. Look it up. It is fascinating, fascinating process how they collect the lac bug excretions for making shellac. Alright. Just need to do the front. Are you going to avoid the filico sign again? We don't need to worry about it with this stuff so much. Because this stuff is pretty, uh, it's got a little bit of a chemical nature to it, but it's really mild. Mm -hmm. It's mostly just beeswax and oil, orange oil. So it's not going to hurt the, the logo at all. So I hope everyone is uh, enjoying the process of seeing this thing go from something that was forgotten in an attic to a beautiful shell that we're going to make awesome again and make useful again mm -hmm. and bring back to life and it'll be even more awesome than its original incarnation because it's going to be a really cool guitar amp for a really, really cool guitar. So I'm gonna continue polishing this up. It's probably gonna take me a while. And we'll be back next week with the next part of Project Tombstone. Ciao.